Hey guys, Tildzilla64 with an updated video for you on the JG G36. This is a new review of the video. I realized the first one wasn't that great on it and I'd like to get a new review on it. But overall, it's just time for further review to be updated. This gun still works very well after the years it's been through. This gun's been in the Erie Mercs for about three years now. It doesn't come with this scope or the actual pistol or the actual grip here this is just something was added on but as you can see with the flash hider it'll come with an orange one this is a black version some of the actual guns will come with one but this one never actually did it also comes with a lower rail and this is the JG G36K which the K standing for carbine this gun has a full plastic exterior but a actual metal gearbox and it does have a metal trigger the gun comes with one high cap, 450 round magazine. They are stackable, but as you can see, the stackable things have broken off of this magazine because of just how long we, how long it's been around. But when they break off, there's no holes in your mags. At least they were just kind of molded on afterwards, and you load your BBs in there. High cap meaning a wind feature, and there's a reservoir in the back of the mag that holds the BBs. But let's get back to the review. It does come with metal sights. Everything else you'll see is plastic. The bolt reveals your hop-up, which the hop-up on this gun is actually very accurate and actually works very well for, for being a JG gun with an original price of $125, now being more. The gun is a plastic hop-up unit, which you won't be able to see, but you can see the metal gearbox in there. The wiring is actually very good. To get to your battery, you just pop out this pin, remove it, slide forward. And this is where your battery goes. It will sit right inside of here. And this will be the type of battery it will come with. The original is now actually long gone. This is an Intellect 1600 milliamp, 8.4 volt battery. That's the same type you will get, and it has a 20 amp fuse, which... I'm randomly pointing out to you because the fuse in mine actually blew finally. Sort of a surprise, something that doesn't really usually fail in an airsoft gun, but isn't uncommon. But you just slide it back on, back in place, very simple, just like that. But we're going to slide it back off, we're going to be hooking up a 9.6 volt mini battery, and we're going to see the rate of fire on this gun right now. And by the way, 9.6 volts are safe to use. This is a 9.6 volt, 1600 milliamp battery. Very similar size to this. Just a little tighter fit. You gotta mess with it a little bit to get it to be comfortable. But we're gonna see how this gun hears. As you can see, that gun's very quiet. And we're gonna check out the 8.4 volt. I'm not sure how much of a charge this 8.4 volt battery has. So it will not really reflect a fully charged battery. But we're gonna see what it sounds like. You can definitely tell the performance difference even if the battery is dying because the other battery should have a similar charge. They were both used recently in an airsoft game. But the only other flaw I've seen is the plastic body will have random cracking. As long as you maintain the gun, it'll be all right. And you have to be careful of your where the stock will catch because this is a folding stock design. And that there's a button release on the stock to release it. But where it catches... If you don't pull the stock up and properly release it, and you just pu keep pulling, you will break the plastic latch, which has happened to this one. But besides that, it works very well, and it won't break off. I'm just something to warn you about. But everything else on this gun as well. I did have an issue with the upper barrel, the actual cover, which is a metal cover, by the way, but it actually broke off. And I had to basically take some tape and some glue and re-secure it in place because it was only held together by pressure tabs. But it's not a big deal as long as you're careful not taking off the flash hider a lot. It doesn't seem to be an issue because you because when you put the pressure on it, it seems to twist the barrel. But overall, it's a very nice gun. It's ambidextrous when it comes to your fire selector, which you have 
semi and full auto. And as you can see, I can flip it from both sides. And the selector switch is very crisp and, and solid. And this gun has a decent rate of fire on it. And you can mount a scope over the sights or take both sights off and just have a flat rail. And you can actually take off this handle and put on the G36 scope mount that can mount onto this. And you can mount a bipod on the rail and make yourself a nice little rifle. There's been no upgrades to this gun actually, but overall it's very nice. And it does come with flip-up options, but they're the same circle. So I actually broke off this one. So you have your circle dot, and that's just a more of an open sight. Now that works out very well. And the charging handle works well. Everything else is working very properly with this gun. We're going to take it outside. We're going to shoot it into some cans, and we'll finish up this review. It's Toadzilla 64. We're going outside. JG G36 with 0.2 gram BBs, 10 feet away. review kind of deal. Very shredded by this gun. Decent rate of fire for sure. 0.2 gram BBs. Shoot a shuttle. Did a good job definitely on this gun. But definitely overall very high quality. I definitely like this gun still. That's the end of this review. It's Toadzilla 64. I'll see you guys in my next video.